More than a generation ago, U.S. President John F. Kennedy challenged Americans to ask themselves what they could do for their country. Those famous words encouraged many to become involved in volunteerism through the Peace Corps. Young Americans signed up in huge numbers to go overseas on humanitarian missions. But more than half a century later, JFK's legacy is in danger. To reverse declining numbers of applica applicants, Peace Corps leaders have now announced a series of steps to overhaul the system. Tom Scanlon is the author of Waiting for the Snow, the Peace Corps' paper excuse me, papers of a chartered volunteer. He was a volunteer to Chile during the Kennedy years. Also, Erica Berman is the director of communications of the National Peace Corps Association. She and her husband served in, the, in Gambia in the late 1980s, and they join us from Washington, D.C. Welcome to both of you to Arise America. Thank you. Do appreciate having you. Uh, Tom, let me start with you. Uh, first of all, uh, just give me, if you will, uh, your summary of why you think participation, application in the Peace Corps has been waning over these last recent years. Well, I think the uh, announcement that the Peace Corps made today that they're going to try to uh, expedite the application process is extremely important. Uh, young people and even older people who uh, are thinking about service, two years of service, right now seem to have to wait up to a year before their applications are processed. In my case, uh, I volunteered in March of 61 and was accepted in April. So uh, if a young person who is trying to plan their career and has to wait a year before he has a decision for the Peace Corps, that's a disincentive. And I think that disincentive, more than anything, is what's caused this, this uh, decline. Well, not, so, not a lack of interest. Okay. Well, and then some of the initiatives that the Peace Corps is going to put into place to try to increase interest, do you think that that will do the trip? For instance, allowing applicants to choose the country that they travel to. Well, I think that's a great idea for, se for several volunteers. Now, not all volunteers are going to want to do that. Uh, some uh, are going to take uh, what the Peace Corps gives them. But let's say a person is 23 or 24 years old and wants to have a career in Asia or in China where the Peace Corps is today, or in Latin America. Why not let them link uh, their Peace Corps service to the field where and the uh, area that they want to be active in as professionals? Do you think in some ways the Peace Corps has lost uh, some of its glamour, not that serving in the Peace Corps was ever necessarily glamorous, but the idea of traveling mm -hmm. abroad, going to foreign lands, which was so much less accessible 50 years ago than it is today. Is that some of it that our young people, first of all, we are a global village now, and they have access to most parts of the world should they want it, uh, not the least of which through social media. Well, I think that the very fact that the Peace Corps has existed and lasted for over 50 years is an indication that there's a sustaining uh, power there. And I think that really, uh, in young people anywhere in our country or in other countries, there's this vein of idealism that's always going to be there. And um, I, I think that uh, uh, the, the, any, any organization that's been around for 50 years is not going to have the same sheen or allure that it had when it was first launched by John Kennedy. But I think its very sustaining power is a tribute and, and, a, and proof that it, that, it, that it does still have great relevance. Take us back to that time when you served in the Peace Corps. You were mentioned in a speech by President Kennedy and one of the, the earliest volunteers. What was that time and that experience like for you? Well, it was, uh, I remember when we were leaving on the ship, we, we, we would actually went down to Chile on a boat, and uh, there, there was just total darkness as we went out over the, out of the river, and to me it just signified the whole mystery of our experience. There was no prototype, there was no model. Uh, we were going to have to create uh, what the Peace Corps was going to be all about. And uh, in the original days, President Kennedy and Sergeant Shriver really had a much greater expectation and emphasis on technical skills. They thought that uh, people would teach uh, others how to build buildings or lay bricks or build roads. And that was the case many, in many situations. But a great number of the people that, that persons that volunteered for the Peace Corps were what we called A-B generalists, people like myself who had a philosophy degree. And when they went to their country, really had to try to figure out how they could make a contribution. And uh, in most cases, I think we were able to do that. Also, as part of the backdrop, there was the Cold War. And uh, like when we went to Chile, 
Uh, many, many students at the time really felt great sympathies with uh, the Marxist revolutions that were going on and felt that the only model to imitate for the future of their countries was the Cuban model or the Russian model. So we, I personally at least felt a very strong desire to represent the best uh, ideals of our country and of democracy. You know, I want to go back just to the general uh, challenge that the Peace Corps is facing. You know, at the time that it was established, there was a lot more, at least over patriotism, nationalism, idealism uh, at the time. And times are very, very different. Uh, young people uh, can be a little bit more um, cynical uh, and disillusioned with our, our government. And those words that JFK said, ask not what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. Uh, do you think that's a little outdated in this day and age? It may be become a bit of an anachronism. I think service to country is still important, but I think more important, service to the poor and needy, service to humanity. Uh, I think that's still very much in the young people that I've seen at Peace Corps training programs or in recruitment classes that are training to go overseas. I think they're tr truly idealistic young people. And many of them might be a little bit more pragmatic in the sense that they're trying to build a resume. They want, they want to be involved with international work or international business. And so the Peace Corps fits into that. But that can't be the only reason. You have to have a desire to be of service. And I think young people today and, and some of the older people who volunteer for the Peace Corps are genuinely motivated in that way. Yeah, indeed, I want to bring into our conversation Erica Merman. I introduced her at the beginning of the segment. We have her back now. Uh, Erica, Tom has spoken so eloquently about the importance of the Corps, his experience. Tell me a little bit about how your and your husband's experience in serving in the Peace Corps has enriched your life. Uh, my Peace Corps service has had a huge impact on my life. Um, it shaped my uh, educational path. After, my, after Peace Corps, I went to graduate school in international relations. Um, my friends that I've made, both uh, Gambians and uh, Americans that were in my Peace Corps uh, serving my group, um, have been lifelong friends. And of course, now I found myself as director of communications for the National Peace Corps Association, which is the alumni associate, association for returned Peace Corps volunteers. Let me just ask you um, a relatively tough question because this has been covered in the news media and that is some have, who have served have come back with harrowing stories of being assaulted, particularly sexually assaulted and, and just having a horrific experience. Um, how, how does the Peace Corps address that and protect those who decide to serve uh, in this way? Again, I don't uh, work for Peace Corps, the agency, but um, from what I can, from where I sit as a uh, in the alumni community, um, I know that the commitment to volunteer safety uh, and security is of paramount importance to the agency, from the director uh, on down. Uh, yes, there's been some tough stories uh, that have come out in the past few years, um, and I know that the agency is deeply committed to uh, a cultural change, to putting lots of um, uh, measures and policies, training into, into place. Um, and, um, yeah, I think that's been a, a, a tremendous uh, commitment and, um, you know, there's a risk in everything we do in life um, and every institution uh, that we can think of uh, has unfortunately uh, encountered some of these um, issues. And, uh, but I think Peace Corps, you know, is very committed. Um, there's extensive information on their website about the measures that they're taking and um, those are freely available to anybody who's um, interested and has concerns. Well, we want to thank both of you for your selflessness and your service uh, to this country and to the Peace Corps. Tom Scanlon, Erica Berman, thank you both. Thank you.